my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Senator Kelly Ayotte of New Hampshire. Senator Ayotte first served, his public service I believe, was as the first female attorney general in New Hampshire's history. She served with great distinction in the U.S. Senate from 2011 to 2016, where she was on the Armed Services Committee, as well as on the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee. Uh, we had, uh, I had the pleasure of working with her on the Mitt Romney campaign. Uh, we don't want to talk too much about that. Um, but I do want to mention something which I think is a great tribute to Senator Ayotte and her character. Uh, she was asked personally by Senator McCain to speak at his funeral. And I can't think of too many higher tributes that anybody could have. Senator Ayotte. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am so deeply honored to be here with all of you and especially to see the bipartisan support uh, that you rightly have. I mean, to be able to have Senator Peters and Senator Shaheen, Senator Cardin here, and uh, Ambassador Reese, uh, senators who have such a distinguished uh, history of public service and also who are very committed to human rights. And among those uh, who I count probably the most committed to human rights, uh, someone who actually was one of my assigned mentors in the US Senate, uh, Senator Lieberman, whom I can't tell you how much I admire uh, his public service to our nation. But most of all, you know, at a time when we always look for statesmen, I always think of Senator Lieberman as a true statesman. So thank you. It's just wonderful to be here with you. I want to wish all of you a happy new year as well. Uh, this really is a new day, as Senator Lieberman has said, uh, with what is happening in Iran. I think all of us who come before you today to speak, uh, we hope that the Iranian people's wishes for this new day and this new year is that when we do come before you next year, uh, that they will have their own right to self-determination, that they will rid themselves of this oppressive evil regime that has really held them down from their freedom, from their human rights, uh, from what we all want in this world. Um, that is prosperity, uh, that is freedom, that is to live our lives with our families and to be able to decide for ourselves who represents us. And I wish that in the new year for the Iranian people. We know, and having served on the Armed Services Committee, something that deeply troubled me. Uh, Iran is the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world. The Iranian regime, not the Iranian people, have caused so much death and destruction. Uh, they have spent billions of dollars to fund terrorist groups that we know of that cause unrest in the Middle East, whether it's Hamas, Hezbollah, the Islamic Jihad, uh, they've backed militia forces in Syria, Iraq, uh, and propped up the murderous Assad regime, which we know has just murdered so many of his own people. And he wouldn't have been able to do that without this horrible regime. Uh, the regime, as you know, has, not, has been present, unfortunately, in so many situations, terrorist situations, whether terrorist attacks in Denmark, Germany, Belgium, Africa, Southeast Asia, South America, even in our own country, let's not forget, they were part of a plot to, uh, on our own soil here in Washington uh, to assassinate the Saudi ambassador right under our noses. I mean, think about the boldness of that. The, the regime led by the supreme leader, so-called supreme leader, uh, Khamenei, has spent billions of dollars uh, really just supporting evil and terrorism. And unfortunately, it has been the Iranian people who have paid the ultimate price for the money that this regime has spent causing all of this death and destruction around the world. The Iranian economy struggles, we know that. 
Average Iranians can't afford basic goods, fuel, health care, things that we take for granted as Americans. And they have been denied the prosperity that we know is really the history of Iran, a very productive and prosperous people, and they're being denied that right now uh, by the Iranian regime. The Iranian people, like all people, should have the freedom to choose how they live their lives. They want what we all want, basic human rights and to be treated with dignity and respect. And we stand with the Iranian people, Republicans, Democrats, Independents. This is a truly bipartisan issue. We understand that the Iranian people do not want this terrorism, that they want peace and prosperity. And we want peace and prosperity for the people of Iran. We all know, though, there is no peace or prosperity with the current regime in power. Fortunately, President Trump stood in solidarity with the Iranian people when they took to the streets after the Iranian regime admitted, finally, after being pushed to do so, uh, that it shot down the Ukrainian-bound airliner and killed all 176 passengers on board. The president said then, the world is watching. The world is watching. And the key is to make sure that we continue to watch, that we continue to hold the regime accountable. And now, with Iranians struggling with the dramatic coronavirus outbreak, too many have perished. We know that's because of the regime, because they hid the virus. They thought of their own political interest. They suppressed important health information. The mullahs have spent Iranian money that should have gone to a good health care system that could help in a situation like this and instead have spent it on terrorism. So our hearts go out to the Iranians who are affected by this virus and obvious for, obviously all who are affected around the world by this virus. In the last few months, we've seen the Iranian people stand up for their rights and we stand with them. They've taken to the streets. We've heard their chants, death to Khomeini, uh, death to the murderer and his rule, and his rule is null and void, and we agree. We know that people from all walks of life have participated in these protests, and we stand with them. Iran will know that we continue to watch and the world continues to watch. But I want to talk to you about what we need to do as Americans to continue to not only as we stand with the Iranians with their protests in the streets, and they should know that we have their backs, but also, what can we do now? We can continue, as the Trump administration has done, to impose tougher sanctions on the regime itself, continue to expand those sanctions and to keep the pressure up at a time when we know that oil prices are dropping, when we know the economy is struggling, when we know that they are on the edge and we need to keep that pressure up to help those who are protesting their own government. The mullahs only understand and respond to strength. That is why it was important that President Trump took out Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. As has already been said by Senator Lieberman and others, he had the blood of so much blood on his hands he had the blood of fellow Iranians, he had blood of those in the Middle East, and he had the blood of Americans on his hands. And I am the wife of an Iraq war veteran, and I'm grateful uh, that finally he, as Senator Lieben said, got what he deserved. But taking out Soleimani was certainly a blow to the regime and a setback. But we cannot be naive about this. The Quds Force will nevertheless continue its reign of terror and oppression without him. That's why we must act. And the most important issue that is coming up as we think about it in October, and I want to commend Senator Cruz and also Senator Jim Risch, who is the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, because they have called for what's called snapback of sanctions against Iran.
In October of this year, what will happen if we do not act, if we do not push for snap snapback, if the world does not push back, Iran, the arms embargo against Iran will be lifted. What does that mean? What that means is Iran will be allowed to buy and sell arms, purchase tanks, purchase fighter jets from China and Russia, and continue to per per pursue, now almost legitimately, advanced ballistic missile technology. This is a huge danger as Iran continues to develop this technology to place a nuclear warhead on a missile. And to all of our European friends, this should be a deep concern to them. If Iran, with the lift in the arms embargo, is allowed to get more advanced technology, that can harm our European friends, that can harm our friends in the Middle East, that can harm our friend Israel. And we also know, I know from having served on the Armed Services Committee, they continue to pursue the technology to develop an ICBM that can hit the United States of America. And so we cannot legitimize their access to any type of missile technology to arms or for their ability to sell arms to bad actors. And that's why snapping back sanctions under UN Resolution 2231, which some have said we do not have the authority to do so, I believe very firmly that the United States of America has the authority to do so, and that if we do not act, the world will be in danger. And so I would say today, what can we work on as we think about what we need to accomplish before the fall is to really focus on making sure that the arms embargo is not lifted on Iran, that the sanctions are snapped back. <laughs> and finally, that we continue to hold Iran accountable for all of its human rights violations, as every speaker up here has said today. Uh, this is a time where we have an opportunity to come together to continue the maximum pressure campaign to make sure that there is, the people have the right to regime change in Iran and that they can live in freedom and prosperity. I want to thank you so much for having me uh, here today. Uh, the work that you do, as Senator Liebman said, is so critical. And the voice you have is so strong as Americans. And we very much, our hearts go out to the Iranian people. But we know that they are strong. And we know at the end of the day that their voices will prevail. And that they will determine their history, not this current regime. Thank you.